Split tail jerk shads are a classic time-tested option for inshore fishing. And with spring just around the corner, they're going to be a top producer that you're gonna wanna have in your tackle box. But we've been getting a lot of questions about what color jerk shad should I be throwing? And there's really 100,000 options out there with all the different lure companies that make different colors. And I wanted to give you guys my top three options, really just to make it simple for you guys. And it boils down to light and dark lures. But I'm gonna go over the three options we've got here at Salt Strong and just break it down, make it simple for you guys so you can go out there and catch a bunch of fish this spring. So before we jump into these three colors and when I like to use each of them, I wanna give a really quick overview on when I break out the jerk shad because as a lot of you may know, I am a primarily paddle tail fisherman. They do a great job of covering a lot of different areas really quickly. They've got good vibration to them and they can you know, attract attention from fish from good distances away, but that can sometimes be a bad thing. That vibration can actually scare fish off under certain conditions and you will may notice that the fish are spooking off before the lure even gets to them. And that's when I like to break out the jerk shad, when the fish are really skittish or it's a really calm day and that vibration is, is just spooking those fish off. So if you're starting to notice that those fish are not really attracted to the paddle tail, you know there's fish in an area and you're not getting strikes, that's when you're gonna wanna break out the jerk shad. And the first color I wanna talk about is this slam shady white. The reason being, it's great for really a generalist scenario, especially with that slam shady fleck in it as it's starting around. It's got a really good flash to it, but white is a really good color under both clear water and dirty water scenarios. Reason being is white does a good job of taking on a lot of light and adjusting to the hue of the water around it. So if you're fishing in really clear water, this gives a good flash, good subtle presentation to those fish that are around. Uh, but in the dirty water, it does a good job of creating an outline and letting fish see it, even if there is a lot of murk in the water because that white is again reflecting the light. If you took any other color, white is always going to reflect more light because it just is basically like a mirror. If you have a black lure, it's going to attract light and hold that light and not bounce off. Uh, but this white is a good generalist lure uh, if you're not sure what color to go with. So if I'm really unsure of what color the fish are keyed in on or I'm not really keen to what the water clarity is, maybe the sun's not up high enough where I can determine that yet, but I know I need to use a jerk shad because fish are spooking off or it's, uh, you know, fish have been dialed in on the more erratic motions, I'm going to go ahead and use that white. So that's really the first color I wanted to talk about because it's what I'm gonna probably throw first if I know the fish are keyed in on jerk shad style presentations and I'm not sure what the water clarity is, maybe that, again, sun is not high enough, I'm usually going to go with white because it works under the widest variety of scenarios. Now, once that sun gets up and I'm starting to look at kind of see what the color is, then I can determine whether the water is clearer or the water is dirtier. And that's when we can split into our two other types of colors. Now to continue on with a clear water scenario, a lot of times that white is going to take on some really, really good light. If it's a sunny day, that can kind of be a bad thing because that white does a really great job of reflecting light. And sometimes it can actually be too much. And that's a lot of times when I like to break out the pink jerk shad because it's a little bit more of a dull white. If you guys can see, this is the Fred the Jerk. Uh, it's again got that nice slam shady sparkle to it with those silver flecks in it, uh, but it is a little bit more of a duller white, which is good because it doesn't take on as much light, but it still gives that kind of clear water presentation. And again, as I mentioned earlier, I break up my color choices into light and dark. And this is a good way to make sure that you're not over presenting your lure. You wanna be as subtle as possible with your presentation. Something that's too flashy or you know too big is usually a bad thing. So I like to use that subtle presentation. So that's when I break out the pink lure. In fact, I've had a lot of great success even with pink paddle tails in really gin clear water. Uh, that's that time when that water, you can see straight to the bottom. It's like you're looking through a, a glass of tap water. Uh, that's when I break out the pink because it's just a little bit more subtle. It's not as harsh as that white and it doesn't show up from as far away. Generally, most bait fish are going to kind of adjust to that water clarity. You'll see if you're on a flat that's got a lot of seagrass and it's really clean water, those pinfish that are moving around almost look translucent. And that pink does a good job of presenting that translucent bait fish without being too sparkly. Spoons work really well because it's a sparkle here and there and it's just kind of flashing like a pinfish coming in and out of the grass. But something really harsh white that's so constant, I've seen fish turn off from that. They're not too keyed into it. And that's when I break out that pink. So moving away from the clear water scenario, you're getting into some water 
that's either tannic because you've had some really heavy rains like we do in the spring, that water gets a little bit brown, but it's still kind of clear, or you're in a situation where there's a lot of mud or silt that's mixed in with that clear water, and it's now just a little bit murkier and dirtier. I don't like to fish jerk shads when it's completely mud brown, completely chocolate water where you can't see to the bottom. When there's some good stain in the water and there's a kind of murk to it, but it's still kind of clear, you can kind of make out the bottom. That's when I like to break out a darker presentation with this Alabama Leprechaun. Reason being is, again, as I like to split things up into clear and dark presentations, Alabama Leprechaun does a good job of creating a outline, a shadow in the water that fish can kind of key in on. With the clearer presentations, that can kind of get lost in the murk. The white is a good option, but if you're really looking to stand out in some water where fish are really looking for outlines as their stuff darting around in front of them, I love the Alabama Leprechaun, especially with all of that gold flack and spark in there. One of the top lures to use in dirty water scenarios, and one of my favorite lures for spring, is a gold spoon. And the gold fleck that we put in the Alabama Leprechaun does a good job of giving that same flash while allowing you to key in on a very erratic retrieve with fish. In fact, I was using this the other day in the exact same scenario that I talked about, where we had some really, you know, kind of murked up water in a generally clear area. I threw this on because fish were dialed into a very erratic popping retrieve. I had been using paddle tails, the bite had kind of slowed down, and I was looking to trigger a very very serious erratic response out of some big trout that I was fishing for. In fact, I'm gonna show you guys the clip here, but dirty water with one of these Alabama leprechauns is a, a really great way to get onto some fish if that bite slows down and you know they're in on those erratic retrieves. Seems like they're dialing in on a really erratic kind of retrieve. So what I'm gonna do, Pull this bomber off just for a few minutes, just out of curiosity, and see if I put this jig head on this Alabama leprechaun and see if it doesn't pick up some strikes. Just because it's a, a little bit of a better color for this darker water and it's got a better darting action, which it seems like the fish are really keying in on. So we're gonna give this a go. Looks a little funky, but it's, you know, it's rigged right. Um, see if that doesn't grab some fish. There we go. Yeah, that leprechaun got it done right there. Oh my goodness, that is an angry fish. Angry, angry, angry fish. This is a pretty good one right here. Oh man. Landed. Oh, that was an angry fish. Dude, that thing inhaled that leprechaun. That is a solid trout right there. It looks like probably another 20 incher most likely. Good fish. This one go. A 20 incher on the board. So there you guys have it. Those are my three choices when I'm fishing with jerk shads inshore. And again, these are just my personal opinions being out on the water almost every day, every week, uh, being out, seeing what fish react to under different water clarity scenarios. But I would like to hear you guys' personal thoughts on what your favorite color jerk shad is, what color works best under different water clarity scenarios, because again, these are just opinions. We don't know what fish are going to react to, what their actual preferences are, unless we interview a fish and that's not gonna happen. But if you wanna pick these up, uh, if you are interested in using these colors, we do have them in the Salt Strong shop. I'll leave a link below and we'll probably put one on the screen here right now. But definitely pick some of these up. These are great color options. I've caught a lot of fish with them. You guys have seen us use these for years now, especially that Alabama Leprechaun. Great choices here. And if you guys want to see more awesome fishing tips, I definitely recommend you guys join us in the Salt Strong Insider Club. We've got a lot of great information in there, not just on color choices for lures, but fishing tactics, how to pre plan proper trips, and tons of other great info. So thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the number one online fishing club in America because we actually guarantee we're going to help you find and catch more fish, save money on tackle, and make friends fast. Or it's free. So we hope to see you in the Salt Strong Insider Club soon and thanks again for watching.